we were ready to begin yet. Um, and we have to take care of a couple things uh, before we actually start. So, I would like to say, first of all, because we live in the age that we do, a lot of stuff competes for an audience's attention. So, we must ask you not to leave the theater for any rumored performance of acrobatics on the next street over, or a gladiator match in the amphitheater across the river, or a noisy frat who happens to be on the other side of this wall. <laughs> anyway, please sit back, give us your attention, and laugh as your wit allows. My mistress Maya is hosting a big dinner party here tonight, and I'm in charge up here. A lot of responsibility. I gotta make sure everything's ready. Like, you know, the, the food, the plates, the drink, the, you know, the cups, uh, the food. Oh, Jupiter's balls, I almost forgot. <laughs> Gotta make sure the cooks are ready. I mean, last dinner party, there Vito! was Vito! Vito! <coughs> Boy, you cannot still be setting the table by all the gods if those hands and feet worked as fast as that mouth of yours. To whom were you speaking anyway? Vito? Well, just get moving. I have to go to the market to pick up some last minute things. You finish up in here and then get to the kitchen before our mistress hurts herself. Yes, your majestic highness. Don't forget your place with me, boy. Relax! I'm only kidding! But don't forget, you're a slave too. I shouldn't be doing all the work around here. But you don't do any work by Jupiter. And don't forget, I've been here much longer than you have. Half a century. Long before you were even in the stars. And I can still give you good beating if I need to. Just because you're younger. And bigger and stronger and better looking. I can still give you good swatching like I did when I found you here. Ten years ago already. You were so squirrely when I grabbed you by the hair. Go look dripping from your chin. Bread stuffed in your belt. What a wild thing I gave you, huh? <laughs> yeah, and then you sent me to jail. And I would have left you there had it not been for our mistress arranging her purchase of it. You know, I don't think I would have been more surprised to see Pluto himself standing at the door as when you walked in with her. <laughs> you may fool our good lady and that beautiful girl, but I see through you. Well, I never. <laughs> Enough chatter. Get back to work. I'll return shortly. Okay, give me American <laughs> Guess I gotta finish this. Anyway, like I was saying, there's plenty of food for the big crowd coming here tonight. My mistress Maya, she's having some pretty big names over here. And the senators, well, it's like they can smell the gold. Uncanny, really, but then again, I prattle on. You all probably don't know anything about big city payoffs, money grubbing politician, <laughs> corruption, bribery, nepotism, <laughs> paying denarii to play the political game. But here in Rome by Hades, the game is on. And my mistress Maya is one of the big players. Everything in this city's for sale. I mean, did you know they're thinking about renaming our amphitheater the Alpi and Monte Chariots United Coliseum? Incredible. I mean, hey, I'm an old-fashioned kind of guy. Don't get me wrong, I'm 17 and a full adult and able to vote. Alright, well, maybe not a full adult. I'm a slave. But if I were a citizen, I'd be able to vote already. Early and often, as they say. And I'd sell my vote to the highest bidder. <laughs> one day, one day I'll save enough and I'll buy my freedom. Mine and Claudia's. Uh, Claudia, she's a slave here with me. She's my mistress's attendant. My Claudia. <sighs> but she thinks too much of people. Vito, have guests started arriving yet? Uh, not yet. <laughs> Why are you talking to yourself? Talking? Who's talking? I'm working. Ah, uh, yes, working. On the same task group that gave you two hours ago. So, come on, we need your help in the kitchen. Maya won't let me do anything. She's gonna strain herself when she tries to lift and carry it all. Tell her you'll do it. I can't tell her anything. She insists. She says it keeps her down, so... I work on the desk, she does the lifting, and I'm stuck looking. I could think of something else you could be stuck with. Not now. We have a lot of work to do, and you don't need another distraction. Oh, who'd be distracted? <laughs> I'd be very attentive. Not now. Guests will be arriving soon, and Maya's counting on a nice night full of food and drink to loosen up the guests. To 
To loosen them from their money, you mean? It's for a good cause. Uh, we're a good cause, too. We don't need the money as much as some. Well, we need it more than those fat cats will be coming here tonight. That's none of our business. But that's the point. It should be our business. I mean, they just keep all that money and they grow richer and fatter and meaner. And we stay poorer and scrawnier and slave here. <laughs> They take up all the money you need. Claudia, why can't you see people for who they really are? They're leeches. Selfish, greedy, grubby, mindless. All people are the same. Do you think I'm like that? You? No, I'm never. You're everything that they're not. And you? Uh, well, I'm... Uh, I mean, I guess I could be better. I guess I'm in the middle. I'm a slave now, so there's not a lot I can do about it. But I'm a slave, too. Yeah, but you're different. You'd give Karen an extra silver coin just for the view across the river Styx. And you? Um... <laughs> you take his pillow right out from underneath him and sleep the whole way across. All right, finish up in here. I will make sure Rufus finishes you. what I tell you? She sees the good in everyone. Just last month, she was wandering around the forum right around the evening meeting. It's getting dark. And then she sees these two kids robbing this old lady. So she grabs a stick from the side of the road, and she chases the little shits! And she grabs them, and she beats them, and then she makes them give the money back. And then she asks them why they were stealing. And they say they were hungry. So she bring these, brings these hoodlums back to my mistress's house, and my mistress feeds and clothes them. And now, they live here, and they work in the stables. Anyway, her and me are going to get married just as soon as I save enough to buy our freedom. I mean, I'm pretty talented, too. I juggle. <laughs> <laughs> and I can make people laugh. <laughs> See? <laughs> and I can tell stories, and I can, um, well, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to look at me, man. <laughs> I know what the ladies like. The fellas, too, for that matter. <laughs> they know I'm just a slave and I just want my freedom. So what's the harm? And they get what they come for. Vito, is everything ready? Uh, yes, mistress, I just finished setting the table. We need your help in here. This pot is too heavy. But don't, don't lift it. I got it. I'm coming. I'm coming. I was under the impression that others were going to be here. I think we're a bit early. 
excuse me. I think we're a bit early. Oh, well, uh, I was in back helping my mistress. Uh, I don't want her lifting those pots and pans. So I told her to call me when she needs my help. Uh, hey, you two stay here. I'm gonna get you some wine. Oh. Well, Senator, I must be honest, we weren't expecting anyone quite this early. Oh, I thought others were going to be here by midday. Um, well, <laughs> that's true, but, um, uh, oh. We weren't expecting you. That's right. Uh, they told us that uh, four would be arriving before the big crowd, that there'd be uh, Madame Eudoxia, um, Senator Chalertair, and Senator Romano sent his, um, lady friend. Oh, yes, the lady friend. <laughs> the never virginal Genovesa. Oh, what a prize she'd make. The captain strung up on a boast. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, you're still here. Um, well, I'm so sorry. Uh, they, in any event, they told my mistress that four would be arriving. They weren't expecting me. Oh. Uh. Mm. So. Yes, well, in any event, we'll wait here, but, uh, do me a favor and serve this wine at dinner. Don't tell them where you got it. Uh, yes, sir. I'll, I'll open it right away. You don't take me. Excuse me? Take me to see your mistress. It's been too long since last we talked. I'll just read it very quickly and let her get back to her tasks. Uh, yes, madam, you don't see her right this way. Open the bottle now. Good idea. Oh, and set the water out for mixing. Let it breathe. It's good. The air moves in, moves out. The wine opens like a fresh wound. It seeps out, quenching the earth's thirst. It wraps itself around the tongue, and dances with the hearty sauce. Ah. Venom. The blood of the gods. The blood of Ceres. I will spill their blood if I don't get what I came for by the gods. Those senators think that they can undo me. They think that they can conspire against me, keep me out of their plans. That will end soon enough. The end begins tonight. Thank you. 
Claudia, he hasn't lost that look. I see it every day, half the time. Rufus complains of him not working. It has to do with his daydreaming. Of you, no doubt. But does he think of me when... All the Titans should have to handle tits like those. No, no dear, don't torture yourself. Of them all, he loves you. Love them all, that's the problem. <coughs> all of them, if I could have just one moment alone with them all, just a piece of them all. For just a piece of me, I get some cold cash. Bounce my bags here, put some coin in my purse here. One moment <laughs> and I bag the lot of them. I make them hot and that gets me cold cash. And I boil, but pretend it bothers me not. Cool as a snow capped mountain. Why? It's my release. And I release with them, in them, and on them. So I can buy <laughs> my release. You must accept it all and all of them, if you will have them. It's you, I know, of all people. I don't understand. Why do things have to be the way that they are? I mean, you're just trying to get along doing what someone tells you to do, and then someone else gets on you about something else. Build me this, get me this person, cook me this, do this, do that. He does everything for you. And I do them, because it's what they want. And they pay for it good. But why does he have to do it all? They pay and beg for more. And pay for more. He loves that much. Me? Or? All that blubber and all that sweat. I mean, you'd think a senator would take better care of himself. I mean, bathe, at least for me, for Neptune's sake. <laughs> I mean, a slave could only take so much. You, of course you, of all of them. He loves you. And the ladies, ugh, the powder and the paint and the, the, the scent and the, the curves and sound of their voices, the touch. Hi, yes, I of all people. Ah, no, no, what am I saying? It's Claudia. It's got to be Claudia. Oh, shit, it's like those others put a spell on me. Oh, mother of all the gods, get me out of this! That's it? Yeah. They want me to stick them? I'll prick them till they scream. Why does it have to be this way? Why must he sell himself for our freedom? What right does anyone... I'm sorry, mistress. I meant no disrespect. No. Claudia, I've always given you freedom of tongue. You can tell me anything, and I could change the world. Well, it would be different. They expect a hard thrust from me? <laughs> I'll give him a dagger cut right across the neck. If we could change the world? Just give me one day on top. That's all I need. One day to change the world. Then you'd see differently. I'd put those guys on top in their place. Who do they think they are? We were born the same. Blood from blood. But one is bought, the other not. Uh, what makes them so much different from me? I mean, we eat the same, we sleep, we love, we hate all the same. And our shit doesn't smell any different. The fates discriminate and we cannot understand. But what did I ever do to the fates or you for them? Just as good as any of them. The world is as it is. We mustn't tamper with it. All has been set in motion long ago. And that's just the way it is? It doesn't have to be this way. It's the way it's always been. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'm a lover, not a fighter. So I sit, and I wait, and do what I'm told. How long? We must accept. What else can we do but accept? Claudia, she'll, she'll wait. She loves me. I love him. Why do you love him? He'd die for me. I'd do anything for her. That's it. That's it. Oh, those bastards. I'm gonna be on top. He would do anything for me. Now well, that's it. They'll be sorry. I just have to find the right moment. Oh, Senator! Is someone else here? No. Oh, I uh, thought I heard you talking to someone. To whom would I be speaking? I, I'm sorry, I just thought I heard talking. Don't be ludicrous, <laughs> boy. Get back to your work. I'm Chris. 
He talks to himself, and I'm ludicrous. Should have warned you. Senator Hephaestus over there thinks he's a god or something. They all do. God's his gift to her. <laughs> you know, the Hebrews got a god. God with us. Emmanuel. I mean, supposedly, he's roaming around. Oh. <laughs> I mean, roaming around. <laughs> he's roaming around all over the place. And that's ridiculous. I mean, them saying they have all the answers, and us believing them. But we keep electing them. The good senator here, he is an epicurean. That means he delights in the sensual pleasures. Hey, don't worry. With him, he's just into food and wine, which is good for me. I just gotta worry about serving up meat for his dish with my hands, not dishing up my meat for his hands. <laughs> By the way, where's Eudoxia? Uh, she's, uh, freshening up. Freshening up? Yes, sir. Freshening up from what? I'm sure I don't know. She was going to visit with Lady Maya, was she not? Yeah, that too. That too? What? That too, as in freshen up and visit with my Lady Maya. Huh. Yep. Interesting. Oh. <coughs> anyway, the other one's coming. They won't stop glomming over me. I pretend I like it, and it saves me from getting a beating. Plus, I get a little extra coin in the transaction. You might say that I cooperate with them when I copulate with them. <laughs> It's a life. And tonight, oh boy, tonight I just got the greatest idea. Madame Eudoxia, who's in the other room, freshening up. Well, you saw her. She's got this great big pair of... Speedo! Uh, she's got this great big pair of Egyptian earrings, solid gold. <laughs> They'll be mine after tonight. Speedo! And the others coming? You'll meet them soon enough. Speedo, come here and help Claudia. She can't lift the large dish. Just you wait and see if I'm not telling the truth. You'll see for yourselves. Speedo! I'm coming! I got it. Don't, I'm not going to drop it. <laughs> I'm telling you, Claudia, he is trouble. I don't know what kind of trouble, but I don't trust him. Well, he certainly knows his wine. The bottle he brought, I've seen it on the market. 30 days of leeches it would cost. Where do you think he'd get the money for something like that? I'm telling you, Claudia, he stinks like a carp on the pavement in August at midday. <laughs>
What? What's the matter, Claudia? I'm happy like we are. We're together. We have a good life. We can start a family here and now. Maya is good to us. We'll have children. They'll, They'll be slaves. No, Claudia. No children of mine will be slaves. I'd wait. I'd rather wait a thousand years to marry you. And oh, no, Venus is tits. I didn't mean it like that. I, <laughs> freedom is everything to me, Claudia. And I, I want to give that to you and any kids we may have. Freedom over love. I'm doing all of this for love. All of your extra services for this <laughs> love. All of the men and women who come along demanding a spin on your pedestal, all for this love? Vito, I don't like it. You always being at their call. They beckon and you bark for them. They point and you lie down with them. They pump and you moan for them. They. I just hate thinking of you with them and I. I just wait. Just a little bit longer. I don't have any more control over this than you do. No. Oh, you poor baby. The poor slave has been victimized by Rome's rich and powerful. You poor. That's enough, Claudia! Listen, we agreed to this. Besides, it's not too much longer. I'm... Never mind. What? Never mind! What were you going to say? I... I'm just shortening the amount of time it's going to take. That's all. What are you talking about? That's all you need to know. Vito, tell me everything now. God's all right. You're scary when you're angry. Okay, truth, truth, truth. Okay. Um, well, uh, sometimes, afterwards, when they're sleeping, you know, after. And it's only the men I do this to, not the ladies. What? I, okay, I get into their coin purse and just... Just a coin here and a coin there, small stuff, they never notice. What's the harm? Vito! Shh, Claudia. Come on, let's give us our freedom faster. You're a thief. I am not, I am a man. <laughs> Who happens to steal, but for a good cause. I mean, keep your eyes on the prize, Claudia. We're going to be free. What price for your price? Vito, this is changing. I've got more responsibilities. Especially if we're going to be free. I mean, you, a house, a farm. Yes, it will. You're forgetting us, the greatest prize of all. You're getting dignity and honor and self-respect. If you do this now, you know, how can I trust you when you're free? That's not it, Claudia. You're not listening. I am. I think I'm listening all too well. That aside, I still hate thinking of you with them. I'm afraid one of them will break us apart. They'll steal you away from me. I'm only thinking of you. Oh, fine consolation. So you're only thinking of me and that old... Grizzly Senator Ursus caresses you and, and kisses you and puts That's you enough. I, look, Claudia, in order to get out of this life, we have to buy our way out. That's just the way it is. We have to get out of this one first, and there's no other way. I just didn't know that I'd feel this way. That I'd be just jealous. You can't be serious. Who are you jealous of? That old Ursus? Or any of those others? It's not them, it's the other one. The pretty ones, the ones with time and money and power. The women of Rome are very seductive. Their allurements and stamina are legendary. They're nothing. They're just extras. Maya wants me to do them the favors for their husband's support of her projects. They're pretty and clever and powerful. Well, I don't want pretty and clever. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. You're beautiful and wise and strong. I don't need my paint or intrigue or anything else they've got going on. Dangerous. Don't worry. Do you forget who's going to be here tonight? <laughs> her? Oh gosh. I, that was just a couple times back in the day for her husband's support of Maya's project just before he died. I mean, I was just a kid back then. I was talking about Lady Genovesa. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Madame Eudoxia is coming here? It's coming. Um, is already here might be on the more accurate end of things. What do you mean she's already here? How is she here? She wasn't even invited. She might have been invited. Um, I just didn't tell you uh, to make sure that... To make sure that I didn't make a scene? That's the one. You know, you think you're so smart. You think you know me and all women so well. <coughs> Let me tell you, you don't know bullshit. Vito, where is she? Where is she? Uh, cleaning 
stop it, I guess. From what? Oh, Claudia, stop it. Oh, Claudia, <laughs> come on. Okay, she wanted me to take her to see Maya into the kitchen. I was in the kitchen all day with Maya, and I didn't see her. Why didn't you bring her in to see Maya? I was gonna! But then she dragged me into the storage room by the kitchen. Oh, you were right there? That's what you were doing, all that noise? Uh, she made sure we didn't make too much noise. And it didn't last very long? <laughs> Claudia, she means nothing to me. That's irrelevant. She obviously thinks differently. Uh, Claudia, I told you she means nothing to me, and that's the truth, and that's what matters. But she's our chariot to freedom. That's all that matters. That's all? I only want you. She only wants you. What do you do? Use her. She can destroy you. <laughs> you forget who you're talking to? I'm talking to a slave. Yeah, but I can now box her and the rest of her. I'll lose you. No, you won't. You're dangerous. Listen, Claudia. <coughs> Whatever happens tonight is to get us our freedom faster. I mean, that's why I'm doing all, all of it, Claudia. Love and freedom. I, look, can't you see it? Me coming home after a day in the fields. The kids will come running up. A dog will be chasing after them. You like dogs. And we'll all sit down to eat. And we'll go tuck them into bed. And we'll go into our bed. Totally free. You are a fool and a slave. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> well, that's my Claudia. <laughs> She'd give Venus herself a run for a month. Oh. Mm. Ah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> She'd give you a run for your money, all right, but you'd win for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch myself with what I say. I mean, these deities can be kind of crazy sometimes. You there. Boy. My cup does not run a thorn. I'll fill her up. Yes, sir. I have the strangest dream of Greeks. You seem like a dependable boy. But, uh, tell me. Are you dependable? <laughs> me? Of course I am. This place wouldn't be what it is without me. Let Jupiter himself strike me down and find life. Oh. <laughs> I mean... Just the other day, my mistress Maya sent me down to the forum to fetch one of you guys. Uh, Senator, what's his name? I'm down here to Tiber. So I went, and then I went, and I tried to find him. Yes, here. yes, okay, fine. I can see that one of you, fine, you're dependable, whatever. But if I let you stand here talking all day, we'll be here stuck all day. I was just saying. That. Well, I'm just saying that I only have a certain amount of time in which to say it before the others arrive. What I need is someone on the inside. Side? Oh. What? You have your mistress's trust. Your mistress has the trust of that prick, Romanus. Romanus has the trust of Hades Chilerator, who has the ear of the emperor. One of the few who do. I don't understand. What I need is an extra set of eyes and ears and hands. Or what? It's my business. I'm sure we can work out something mutually beneficial. The serpent is rising, I can tell. I certainly have what you want. He certainly flatters himself. You definitely have what I want. There she glows, the great white delusion. Granted, I probably do have what he wants, but there is no way in Hades that he's getting it. There is no freedom worth that price. I know what you like. <laughs> What you don't. You give me what I want, these hands stay away. You fail me, and this is all mine. And more, that girl of yours, she'll be mine as well. What? Claudia? What? No, Maya would never sell her. She'd never split us up, and Eudoxia would never let you take me. Eudoxia? You think she's your patron? Come on, boy, don't be a fool. Your balls may be your sack lunch for the moment, but once she's <laughs> lapped up her fill, she'll leave you dangling and drained. She's 
made promises to me. Oh, promises. <laughs> What's our promises made to you after you two have flown in and out of each other all night? They're not worth the sheets you stain. I don't believe you. Faith is meaningless to me. I know her better than you. I'm more experienced in all things more than you. I think I can predict what will happen if you set sail on her barge. Well, still, Maya would never let you split up me and Claudia. Maya, what does she care about you? You're slaves. <laughs> you do your task. She can keep and dispose of you as she wishes. I can make it worth her while. Keep you and that dove together. I should also add that I can be an unending source of pain for Lady Maya if she refuses. She doesn't play games. Oh, I know. Everybody in Rome knows the great and virtuous Lady Maya, virgin <coughs> queen of the Imperial City. A queen without a king. <laughs> God's how I would love to crown her and possess all this. You wouldn't get the chance. I'd tell her before you did. You would, wouldn't you? You're loyal, if nothing else. But just remember that a slave gives testimony in court under torture. It'd be a shame to see these limbs and muscles all mangled and burned. And to see this, to see it limp and lifeless. <coughs> It'd be all for nothing, because your mistress would lose anyways. What do, you, what do you mean? You don't need to know all the messy details. It's about time that the house of Maya learned to respect me. I have power outside the city. Power backed by a sword, and by the legions of Rome yearning for their time on top. It'd be a shame to see Lady Maya on the bottom, as it were, in the time game. All right, you win. What do you need me to do? <coughs> Come on now, boy. This isn't about winning or losing. It's about each of us getting what we want. We are born into this life in the conditions that the fates bestow on us. We are able to caress fortune, milk her goodness onto us. We can help each other, you and I. So what is it that you want? <coughs> Money? Women? Parties with Greeks? Me. What is it that you really want? Speak. Make it real. Freedom. I want freedom for me and Claudia. Freedom. Exactly. That is in the heart of every man, barbarian or Roman alike. You're free of I will guarantee it for you and that girl. Just do as I say when the time comes. Vito! Vito, Rufus needs your help. The guests are arriving in the atrium. Bring the senators into the triclinium. They'll take the others into the peristylium. <laughs> this evening's playing out to be a big panium in my reptilium. <laughs> <laughs> Coming, mistress. outside a hen house? Well, it is nothing compared to the cockfighting that's going to go on later. Hey, I got to get back to work. Watch your things. These ones and the ones in the other room will stop at nothing to get your stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, may I escort you to your seats? Thank you. 
welcome to my home. Enjoy yourselves. We have quite the feast. Lady Maya, send her Romanus, Hades Chilariter, Eudoxia, and the uh, lovely Genovesa. The gods smile upon our meeting tonight. The food, it smells titillating. Oh, but don't mind me. No, drink, drink. Well, Senator, I appreciate your free spirit. His spirit's the only one with a nose to smell a free meal. Uh, please, join us. This is an odd display of familiarity from you, Senator Hephaestus. Not at all, good lady. Of the evening. I'm really a quite <laughs> congenial fellow when you get to know me. I say what I mean, mean what I say, and enjoy the life in which I say it. I'm quite transparent, actually. Transparent as a stagnant stream. Stagnant as that putrid stream flowing from between those legs. <laughs> so, dear Hephaestus, Tell us where you procured this luscious wine. I've never tasted anything so rich, so full, and the color it's so... Blood bread? <laughs> yes. It's common. I find that the most interesting grapes, like people, are of the common type. When their insides are bled, their very best comes out. Is he talking about grapes or people? <laughs> the wine is my gift. The finest Valerian straight from Campania, of course. Vulcan himself tilled the soil at the foot of Vesuvius. Oh, uh, Vesuvius, those poor Pompeians, all of those people just gone under the ash and, and lava. It's so tragic. Yes, just imagine all that hot liquid spewing from that mass of coal. Some of us. <laughs> That's why we're here. What? Uh, gracious mind. Senator, please continue. <coughs> the Senate has passed a resolution acquiescing to the will of the gods to punish the coastal southerners, and yet offering prayers and supplications. Hallelujah, brother! <laughs> offering prayers and supplications <laughs> and sacrifices for the victims of Neptune and Vulcan. Now, offering prayers and supplications and sacrifices are all good and well, but the Senate also recommends an atonement festival. There will be gladiatorial contests, flamethrowers, acrobats, prisoners fed to beasts. The citizens of Pompeii, Herculaneum, and other coastal towns shall be cared for. Our August Caesar, son of the dearly divine Vespasian, promises swift relief and a steady stream of capital into the temples to placate the anger of Neptune and Vulcan, whom obviously the just and displaced and dead have anger. Obviously. <laughs> hey, did you ever realize? that of the people suffering a natural disaster, wrath of the gods, attacked by a foreign tribe, are Roman citizens. They're called displaced persons. But if they live on the coast, there are barbarians. They're called refugees. <laughs> Interesting. That's all I'm saying. Vito, or wine? Now the issue is how to pay for it. Senator Lycus is leading an expedition down the southern coast to see just where our resources are best spent. But we need to raise the money. The esteemed senator proposes raising a tax. <coughs> now, Romanos, please don't be a fool. I'd, I'd support raising a tax, but you're wasting your time finding a place to rebuild them in that ship on the coast. There are plenty of opportunities right here. The good senator would rather be binging in drunken orgies all the while. My dear Hades Chilarita, still wet behind the ears. No doubt from eroding that canyon of yours in the comfort of your companionless bed. <laughs> Young lady, you judge me too harshly and miss my point entirely. Those Campanians, especially those poor wretches from Pompeii, they took things too seriously. Their, their politics and their games. Imagine, thinking issues win elections. Oh, absurd, it's an insult to Jupiter himself. Oh. And remember that, that rioting at their games at Nursia 20 years ago? Who gets so worked up over a sporting event but a Neapolitan? If you ask me, they'd all be better off eating and drinking a little more and uh, worrying about such frivolities a little bit less. That's all I meant to say, oh gracious advisor to the Emperor. Apparently your belly is fuller than your head these days. You my belly is no fuller than my head, you phallus wart. <laughs> Words. <laughs> Senator, please! I'm merely pointing out the impracticality of the whole undertaking. Bailing out a bunch of dead Neapolitans indeed. If you ask me, we'd be better off rebuilding our markets in the whole region, across our sea. We could rebuild Carthage, start up trade again with them. 
Yeah, but this this is economic masturbation. That's all this undertaking. Oh, cartilage, come on. That war was sacked long ago. Nay, it was leveled long before you and I were even born. Not long enough to lay dead in the sands. Hannibal and his clan are gone. They've been commingling with Spaniards for generations, kicking their balls into a net. But their virility is drained. Africa's ours for the taking. Her waiting lap is open. Shoot our juices into her womb. Watch our seed grow. Someone's <laughs> preoccupied. We reestablish a beachhead. We move out from Sicily, from Egypt. It'll be ours in a matter of weeks. The Empire does not need to continually invade and conquer territories new or old. And someone else needs a history lesson. <laughs> All I'm saying is our resources are needed closer to home. In the coffers of your home, perhaps? In the treasury of Rome, to be used by the people and senate of Rome as guided by his imperial majesty. All the while, Pompey slips further and further down the road. Why are you so opposed to helping your own citizens, and so in favor of resurrecting a sworn enemy of Rome? It is interesting that your loyalties always seem to place you somewhere other than within the gates of the city. Just like your villa, outside the protection of Mount Roma, I find it quite interesting. As I find quite interesting your constant meddling in my affairs. I am not in favor of resurrecting Carthage for Carthaginians. It is for Rome. New Carthage we could name her. Uh, we were talking about Pompeii. It is for Rome that I keep a watchful eye on her enemies. A powerful Carthage would bring new rivals to our shore. <laughs> One in particular. Say what you mean, Chilariter, you viper. <laughs> <laughs> A powerful Carthage, new or old, likely need a more powerful faces. You fear that, don't you? Well, at least you gained a small dropping of wisdom from her teeth. There's no need to be offended, Senator. I'm just a humble advertising agent. If you've nothing to hide, then you've nothing to fear from me. Now I know you're insane. Why on earth would I be afraid of you? I don't think you'd want me bringing up anything as a pledge of ones I have in mind. Senators, please! Remember your station. You are senators of Rome, friends of the emperor by the gods, and guests of my home. I respect you all, but we have a job to do for the poor suffering of our glorious empire, indeed our own citizens. And my guests in the peristylium, they have their pockets full of the money to relieve them. Now, with all respect due to you, let us please return to the topic at hand. Of course, gracious Lady Maya, let's just leave it at that. So for my part, I will refrain from restating the obvious again. Where were we? Uh, we need to get back to money. Now, what is one of the best ways to secure more funding? What is it that the people want? What is it but recognition? Their names inscribed in stone above a building's entry, at the top of the stadium, on the post of a bridge, in a park. I could go on and on. Indeed. We, we merely give them what they want, and we get what we want. And the poor people of the South get a sweet nothing. Freedom! They don't want The money for the relief of Campania. Now, as I was saying... Now, you've got to admit, they're not a boring group. But watch out. Just like you know that they're hiding something ugly under those robes of theirs. <laughs> you know they're hiding something equally ugly in their heads. The ones out in the peristylium, they won't be coming in here. But you better believe that they are just as dangerous. They've got lots of money and nothing to do. And they're good at doing it all over the city. They've got this and that going for one group of senators while fighting against the rest. They're kissing up to the emperor and whispering in his ear against each other. You'd think that after all the bloodbath in the Nero years, especially in 68, that things would be different. No. They've got money, but no sense, no memory, no scruples. The esteemed Tulariter has advised me to focus the Senate's attention on increasing income. Uh, Tulariter, will you please explain further? Thank you, sir. Now, as far as my proposed Revenue Advancement Pragmatic Enterprise, or REAP for short. Oh, no, that's REAP for short, not REAP. <laughs> it's Latin. The letters don't have to match up. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, I've suggested to Senator Lamarus a cherry axle tax. A denarius per axle per Chariots chariot. only have one axle, Pythagoras. All right, then. A denarius per horse per chariot per month. And how about a foot tax for the litter? A denarius per foot per bearer per litter per month. That would be 8 to 12 denarii per, per litter. This is going somewhere. With all the usual exemptions for the senatorial class and nobility. And we can leave the monitoring and leasing of all of the funds to uh, an entity outside of Rome. 
someone in mind? Uh, well, yes, actually. Um, my sister's husband's brother's mother's grandson, Von Nepotismo, <laughs> he runs Monaroma Meters LLC. <laughs> He's got all the brilliance of a cold cinder. How would any of us know the difference? We need to decide what the money's to be earmarked. Pompeii, buried in ash and amnesia. Well, it better, maybe better off not earmarked. Or we could earmark it for a bridge or a new temple or a park. We can use it for salary increases. Tell me, Senators, how does the renaming program progress? Oh, why, it could not go better. Why, just after this morning's session, the Senate passed three sites where uh, Hannibal and his clan were stopped in their tracks. Uh, and Senator, uh, <laughs> to Laritan, give me more wine, sir. <laughs> to Laritan has secured funding from the Etruscan Zoo for two elephants, two who were actually part of the Carthaginian invasion force. Their tusks will adorn the entrance. Oh, those poor beasts will be without their tusks? Oh, not to worry, good lady. They'll be quite dead. They live a long life. That would be almost 200 years. Elephants don't live that long. Elephants are known for their longevity. I thought it was their memories. I don't remember. I think it's the size of their veto or mine. <laughs> My dear, you're sorely distressed, I can tell. I'm fine. I'm tired, that's all. Well, of course you are. You're the one doing all the work around here. That boy is, well, shall we say preoccupied. Vito does his share. Oh, he does, and he does it well, from what I've observed. I must admit, his work is a little bit more playful than laborious. He doesn't enjoy it. Oh, of course he doesn't. Look, he, look, he looks absolutely tortured by the toil. <laughs> He's a veritable Hercules under that strenuous load. Oh, look right there, my dear. That must be his sword stuck out its hip underneath his tunic. Let's <laughs> hope so that if he spills anything, it'll just be the wine. Excuse me, sir, I need to get back to work. Good idea. Now, getting back to the topic at hand, the Etruscan Bank Victory Arch will adorn the new entrance of the Imperial Forum. The Senator will do to remember that the location has yet to be decided. That could well better serve as a, a food court. Hephaestus is Caesar's pizzas and gyros palladium, perhaps. Why, you hypocritical megalomaniac. You despise the Greeks? Sender of Mops, I am appalled. I adore the Greeks. I think every Roman should own one. Besides, <laughs> I'm a businessman. I give the people what they want. Pizza and gyros. They want to remember great victories. This will provide that for them. I'm sorry, gentle lady Genovesa. Is there something you'd like to share? No, I'm quite content to be silent. No, please, my dear. We all know that tongue of yours can only be silenced if it's cut out. Please speak. Very well. Since you are so curious, I want to remind the good senator here that once again your preference for the non-Roman is quite apparent. Greek food, indeed. <laughs> well, let's not let Lady Genovese forget her preference for the non-Roman. Particularly the gladiatorial type. Hmm? Oh, now we hear from the poor widowed Eudoxia. Tell us, dear, your husband, quite the success in the Senate, but not so up to the task as you serve her. Do narrate for us his tragic end. No? Well, then allow me. Hold your tongue, true. What's the matter, dear? If you don't want to hear the story, the mighty Gaius Licinius Geta, believe it or not, more promiscuous against the emperor than he was against you. You've elevated promiscuity to Olympian stature. Go on, our host and these guests see through you completely. For his indiscretions of the bed, she rolled him right into the hands of Vespasian, alleging treason. She even ordered her slave boy to give false testimony under torture in order to convict him. That poor boy, never to raise his cane again. And all for your vicious vendetta, Gaius had conspired against the emperor. Of course, who didn't in those days? But to betray your own husband. And now you simply diddle your way through Rome, swinging from pole to pole. Your face value acceptance of the bills from the Roman rumor mill is simply astounding. <laughs> Truth and rumor are rarely far apart. Senator Faustus can attest. What, I'm a traitor to Rome because I want to build a damn gyro stand? <laughs> oh, you know it's more sinister than that, Faustus. No, I don't. And if you and your damn vestal virgin whatever continue to insinuate anything to the contrary, well then, Senator, I'm <laughs> further step. I always thought the Epicureans were a boring line. 
let me tell you something. You've got drives and maniacal tendencies. But let me remind the good senator of something. The sword has two edges, both equally as sharp. Gentlemen, we are straight again. I must leave you for the moment to attend to the other guests. I will return. I trust you'll leave the bloodletting for the barbers outside my home. The roof is just at the Persian rugs clean. Please continue to enjoy the food. Be no make sure the wine flows freely. Plenty of cup. Here's what I need from you. Excuse me. Our agreement, remember? Now, I need you to disappear with that porch and a basin for a little while. Sender and I have a bit to discuss. Disappear? To where? Well, anywhere you can keep your occupied. Incline, recline, decline, upside down. <laughs> How long? How long? As long as you can get it. Practice this prick boy. Nail it on the wall with it for all I care. I mean, how long do you want me gone? Give me half an hour. Maybe to have oh, Hello, Vito. You're excited for this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> come on, dear. Oh, well, you want to come too? That's what oh. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Senders, it's about time we dispensed with the pleasantries. I wasn't aware of any. Sarcasm, my dear Chilerator, is like a mural. The dimmer the light, the harder it is to see it. Oh. image on all the gold coinage that left the treasury a few months ago? No. No. Well, how about the anonymous letters you penned against Agrippina after Nero's um, death? No, not even that. Of course not. Uh, what about your incessant diddling with the dearly divine Vespasian's sister at his funeral games? No. This is harder than I thought. I've got it. The secret armaments you've been sending, you've been stockpiling in your uh, villa in Etruria. Or the secret envoys you've been sending to Africa. Both. There, now what would you like in exchange for forgetting? Your death. Your paper patriotism is tiresome. I'm not the only one who ever has or will ever conspire to kill a standing executive on the throne. Now what do you really want? Your departure from the Senate. Oh, come now, Romanus, don't be a lunatic. We can work out something mutually beneficial here. You have a price. As do you. Yes, but you could easily throw me into the chariot wheels, as it were. So why should I help you? Because there's room enough for both of us under the chariot. It just so happens, one of my relatives is an aide to General Maxinchus in Illyria who seems to have intercepted a communique from one Gaius Publius Romanus, inquiring as to the number of troops at the general's disposal, how long it would take said general to get said troops to the, the gates of Rome in the event of a coup against our illustrious... You are a liar! Oh, whether I am or not is beside the point. Can you afford to be wrong? Uh, yes, I can, actually. You forget that I am in the complete trust of our friend Hades Tulerter, who, as we know, is in the complete trust of your, the Emperor, whereas you are, as they say, persona non grata at court. Yes, well, there is Tulerter, isn't there? 
<laughs> this is your seal? It is. Then it would seem that we're at an impasse. Each one of us has our throat around the other's neck, and neither's willing to let go first. One of us will? Not I. Nor I. Peter was right, that man is trouble. I just wonder what kind of trouble. My Vito, he does everything for us. With an eye to the future. Why one day he says we'll have enough money not just for our freedom, but for a piece of land. We'll have a farm and animals and children. They'll be free, he says. We'll be free, he says. If I go to jail, lose my right to vote. I lose my right to vote. That's all I can find. Oh my God! All I do. Oh, Senator. Oh, Lady Maya, get help. Rufus, Rufus. Hey, where did he get these? The little thief. Take him to the prison. No, Vito, no. Oh. killing them as well. Hence, hmm? what were you going to say about 
Vito came with Lady Genovesa and Madame Eudoxia. I didn't say anything. No, but you were going to. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Yes, you were. No, not I. Please, tell me. Why, child? Why go digging in palace manure when you know you don't want to smell what's there? I need to know. They were together, weren't they? <sighs> oh my God, you with both of them? At the same time? They were together when they died? <coughs> but how did this happen, and during dinner and without our mistress's order? Apparently, Hephaestus tricked him. He got Vito to bolt, to fuck, mm, to plot, mm, <laughs> to lie, Genevieve for some reason, and Eudoxia apparently followed. Vito said they were much alive. He said one of them and him down on the other. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Genevieve can take her tongue and tickle the tip. I'm sorry. But you said you wanted to know. Anyway, he had no indication that anything was wrong. Both women were responsive during, during the proceedings. Vito was instructed by Hephaestus to remain in the other room for 30 minutes, which he did. He returned to the banquet. Genevieve and Eudoxia remained in the other room. Vito said they were groggy, but alive when he... Claudia, dear girl, are you even listening to me? You ask me for the details, and then you can't even bear to listen. Poison! It has to be! And those women, but how? What are you babbling about? These three pubs smell of wine, but these two here can smell. In this vial. They all smell like almonds. Cyanide! But, dear girl, they'll say Vito had done it. No, I saw Senator Hephaestus with this last night. He had it out, and then he tucked it away. It must have fallen out when Vito attacked him. This vial proves everything. How do you know this? I was hiding over there. I saw them. I heard everything they were saying. It proves nothing by itself. And it proves nothing of the death of Genovisa or Eudoxia. And you would have to give testimony. Mistress, mistress, come quickly! A slave gives testimony under torture. And to give testimony against a senator. I know what I'm doing. Where is your mistress? Oh, senators, how long have you been here? We just arrived, madam. We must do a thorough sweep of the premises. The emperor wants answers as to how a common household slave can kill three high-ranking officials under the nose of the lady of the house. Centuria, begin the search. What are you insinuating, sirs? We insinuate nothing, madam. The emperor. He's accusing. Accusing? Accusing whom? And of what? Your slave of murder. At was... least one of your slaves. Yes, and you, with the knowledge and complicity of said murder. I? Oh, no. Give me that letter, you wretch. Now, you fool, move over to the other side of the room, or you'll make them suspicious. I'll make them suspicious. You are the one who decided to keep the letter instead of giving it to me last night when we were alone, and you accused me of carelessness? May Jupiter himself roast you to a charred crisp on a spit over Vulcan's fire, then stab spit you in the Neptune's mouth to doubt you! Just remember that we're on the same spit, under the same chariot, and you no longer have Hades Chalariter to whisper your innocence into the Emperor's ear. And I'm still not sure that you're not wholly guilty. So you think I might be innocent? What? You said, I'm not sure you're not wholly guilty, though. Mean me, think I'm innocent. No, no, it's a double negative. I'm not sure you're not holy guilty. Just move over there. Oh, wicked fate, how is this happening? And why to me? How could I have had anything to do with this? And how could my house slave do something like this? Well, ma'am, you were out of the room at the time of the unfortunate Chalarator's death, and conveniently gone when that slave was well, alone shall we say, with Genovese and Eudoxia at the time of their demise. Demises. Demises is. Impossible! Demise. Impossible. Vito would have never taken it upon himself to provide his services to either of them. Neither one of them approached me for this. He would have never done this without waiting for my command. He may be. Incorrigible. Yes. Incorrigible, and he may be. Lazy. Exactly. Yes. Lazy and also um, loose with the truth. Uh, right, right. Can we loose 
with the truth and in the end above his station right he can be slightly above his station and also enough this is about the man that i love yes julia you're right poor veto as i was saying he would have never done anything so presumptuous as that i have known him for most of his life he would never cross me well i hate to be the one to burst your illusion of him madam but he has indeed after you left he approached me, inquiring as to whether or not he should act on the advances of Lady Genovese as well as those of Madame Eudoxia. Uh, to which you responded? I merely told him that uh, I didn't know what your policy was on the matter. I told him that in my household, well, for someone as learned as he purported to be in these things, well, I leave it up to the individual circumstances. I'm sorry, madam, but it's beside the point whether or not your slave got your permission to bed the recently defuncted. The fact of the matter is, he was the last to see them alive, and you were conveniently out of the room at the time of Chalarder's death. It's not true. Vito did nothing, and my lady had nothing to do with this either. You two were right here. Now we hear from the poor milkmaid turned crime scene investigator. Wonderful! Why don't we start with you? You were so distraught at that slave's taking of Eudoxia's pleasures, both past and present. It very well could have been you. Fire! Claudia, silence! You will not address the senators Remember your place. Mistress, if I may speak. Speak, Rufus. I can only speak of what I know. I was with Claudia this morning when she found a file on the floor next to the bench here. Claudia, speak. My lady, this Give that to me, you worthless whore! Senator, you are in my house, and this girl is my property. Back off! <laughs> <laughs> That's her medicine for my, my nervousness. Besides you lying, Harvey, you weren't even in the room. Yes, I was. I was hiding over there. I saw him with this. He had it out just before the age player turned died, and then he gave that cup to Vito. I will not stand here accused by a slave girl and some fossil. Imperial decree or not, I am leaving. <laughs> the girl speaks the truth, Maya. The good sender would remember to hold his tongue, or it may end up wrapped around his neck. Oh, your intimidation tactics don't work on me, Hephaestus. Murder is something I don't doubt to be in your arsenal. You take the word of a slave over mine? Especially over yours. <laughs> now make it account for your actions last night. Your ego is as inflated as your belly. I don't need to account for anything. I will appeal directly to the Emperor. Centurion, come! <laughs> Worry not, Mr. Vile. Though I did not see the vial, I did see Hephaestus give the cup to Chalerite. And by the gods, I remember him giving the cup to Genovesa when she first arrived. Obviously, a much smaller dose. Please, good senator, anything you can do to free my veto. Of course, darling. The guilty shall be have redempted. I shall get my hands on. <laughs> Senator, Senator Romanus. Justice shall be done. I'm sure of it. You shall hear from me shortly, Lady Maya. Thank you, Senator. You are a good friend. Rufus, get the letter ready. Claudia, get my cloak. One moment, Mistress. Excuse me. Look, what is this, and where did you get it? I took it from Senator Romanus. You what? What would possess you to take it? And how did you know that? I saw Senator Hephaestus give it to him while you were sitting on the couch. This proves Vito's innocent. What does it say? Of all the treachery, those damned fools! This will be both their deaths. And, and how did you know about this? It's part of what I heard them talking about last night. Senator Hephaestus said he had a letter from Senator Romanus about an army in Rome. When I saw them at the morning, I knew I had to get it. This proves Vito's innocence. It proves nothing of that kind, but it does prove that those snakes are up to no good and deserve death. Come, Rufus. What about Vito? Oh, no. Vito! Uh, where is your mistress? Um, she had to go out. She had some business to attend. 
adverse fortune. She should be back very soon. Um, she can scarcely leave me alone. No, I'm just not dependable here by myself. Um, there are other slaves nearby if you need me to get them. Uh, I seem to have misplaced a document. Have you seen it? Uh, no, sir, I haven't. I wouldn't know what to look for as I cannot read. Like I said, she should be back very soon, and, and Rufus, too, he's very capable. Uh, you, you wouldn't have to be able to read, uh, to, to look at it. It's, it's has my imperial seal on it. It's this ring. Look. I haven't seen it. Look closer. I'm not familiar, sir. Like I said, my mistress should be back very, very soon. And Rufus, too, he's very capable. He's very strong. He can move the couches if you need him to. He'll help you find it. It's official senatorial business. It's very important that I have it. Are you sure you haven't seen it? I haven't seen your letter, sir. Letter? I didn't say it was a letter. No, uh, I just thought that you said letter. I just assumed that that's what you meant. I haven't seen it, sir. I don't know. Give me that letter. Sir, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have Give it. Give me that letter right now. Sir, I don't have Get it. Get over here, you worthless slave. I don't have it. I Give me that letter. I don't have it. I swear. Give me that letter, or I'll cut it out of you if I have to. Uh, I'll give you a new home, a place on my estate, horses, a home, food, whatever you want. Or, or I can make a horrible life for you. I can cut that boy of yours up, starting with that well worked over prick of his. Just give me that letter, please. Look at me, please. You worthless whore, give me that letter. Claudia! Oh, oh. <laughs> Let go of me! I am a senator of Rome! They're the ones you want! They conspired against the emperor to kill Hades Chilaritaire and the women! Her too! Take them! Please, not me! I'm, I'm a senator of Rome! With your permission, good lady, you got this benevolence mighty Titus, I'll take the prisoners away. <laughs> Freedom. I'll take it. <laughs> 